Hello, Christ United Methodist Church friends and family. It's Pastor Jeremiah coming to you with this week's devotional. And I'm going to jump away from the uh, upper upper room today and look at sharing with you some of the insights that I had tonight at our Lenten book study. Uh, we're reading in rest, uh, a book called Wrestling with Doubt, written by Adam Hamilton, with several different churches all coming together in the community to, to look at the topics that cause us struggle. And tonight's topic, uh, Pastor Julie talked to us about, is heaven real? Do, do we believe in this? Or what is heaven? And, and while I was participating, I felt this deep sense of peace that I've you know needed to feel. I hadn't really thought about experiencing heaven through the lens that she shared and, and what our book was uh, encouraging us to do as we each wrestle perhaps with the doubt of is heaven real or not. Maybe if you're listening to me, you've never even really thought to doubt that because our faith is rooted in Christ. And if you're listening to us more likely than not, you're somebody who has already come to a conclusion that that God's love is real, that Christ is made manifest through that, and that heaven also is by extension real as well. But well, what is heaven and what does that look like for you? And what do you imagine were some of the questions that we talked about? And she used a lens of our senses and, and asked some questions that immediately were difficult for me to imagine, at least right away, but then wrestling with them a little bit, I was able to give language to something that I hadn't really considered before as we started to say, you know, what does heaven smell like? <laughs> Never thought about what does heaven smell like? What, what do you think heaven smells like? I, I came up with the answer home. I feel like heaven smells like home and that's a little different than maybe you might be thinking. I, I think the first way I can maybe connect that idea that I'm feeling uh, regarding that is, you know, going to grandma and grandpa's house when I was little. Grandma and grandpa's house smelled clearly different than my own home and I couldn't wait to go smell that because I loved going to grandma and grandpa's house and yet also now that I've grown and, and lived as long as I have since that time in my childhood, I know what home smells like, what it smells like to go home to my mom and dad's house or to come home after a long journey like I just did. It just, it's home. And that's more of a feeling than it is a sense that you smell. Like, you know, sometimes my house don't smell as good as I'd like it to. We got four dogs, four kids, uh, there's six of us in the house. And so it's not really the smell, it's the familiarity that comes with that smell that this is my home. And so I kind of thought, you know, heaven might smell like this place that's familiar to me, a place where it feels safe. And so that smell, I don't know what heaven smells like, but I would say that once I smell it, it'd be like coming home. Um, or maybe you hadn't thought about this, but what does heaven taste like? And we heard lots of things like chocolate or, or uh, your favorite desserts or um, any number, somebody even said a snowflake on their tongue. Uh, that's an interesting place to put heaven. And, and for me, that taste goes back to Grandma Deagle's uh, uh, carrot cake. There's nothing better than that. I'm pretty sure she puts 10 pounds of butter in that, but it was the best carrot cake. And whenever I think about something that tastes great, it, it's that um, or some maybe home cooking for you or, a, you know, for Tracy, it's probably, uh, it might taste like hamburger gravy and mashed potatoes. <laughs> I still don't understand that one. But we each have these tastes that are so personal and attached to meaning for us. Or, or what does heaven look like? And we had all kinds of stuff like streets of gold and, and pearly gates. And we had all those types of things. But also we had a, a paradise, a garden. There's animals, there's angels, there's you know, all the things that you might imagine seeing, your loved ones, your family members, Jesus. Man, what to think about that. Looking, heaven looks like the throne of God with Christ there before us. How amazing is that? Or, or what does heaven feel like? And we heard a lot of things like satin and comfortable and fluffy and, and this, and it just feels soft. Uh, in several ways, we talked about that, or warm, um, was another language that we used. And and yet I, I felt like the word that came to my mind, again, kind of like going home, that smell, 
Um, gratitude, you know, I can equate gratitude. I understand what gratitude feels like and I can't even imagine how grateful I would be to be in heaven, uh, to be with God and reunited with family, that, that deep sense of gratitude and love that comes with being in a place like that. And what does heaven sound like? And there is all kinds of answers to this. It's busy, it's loud, there's kids and laughter. That's my version of heaven, that it's like a giant family reunion and that buzz of noise and cacophony of sound of people talking and laughing, and kids running. To me, that's a form of heaven. For others, it was peace and quiet and angels singing and just all kinds of different perspectives of what that is. And this idea of heaven through the senses and recognizing that as much as we could say about heaven, it, it, it all falls short. No eyes can see the glory or even comprehend what heaven really truly is. It's so much greater and more beyond than what we can even articulate and give language to. Scripture gives us some images of heaven and we looked at Isaiah chapter 25 and we looked at verses six through eight. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgraces of the, the disgrace of his people from all the earth. There's a lot hidden in there about some of the things. One of the idea of like food and this family gathering and, and being able to be together and share. But yet also God has destroyed death, erased our shame and disgrace, has, has made all things new, has restored that which was broken to something beautiful this hope and this longing. And, and statistically, Americans report, even agnostics, 73% of Americans believe in heaven, but you know, 23% re report that they believe in, in God in a sense that's formal. And so even those of us who are struggling with how to name our religious perspective or to even want to associate our spirituality with religion, I think that's probably the biggest struggle uh, in those surveys is the distinction many people make today between spirituality and differing, differentiating that from religion, probably because of so much that is hard. But you know, I, we also talked about heaven on earth. Does that even exist? And, you know, if we look into the Lord's Prayer as we did tonight, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That somehow heaven and earth are not separate and distinct categories, but somehow in some way heaven can be made real on earth. And how does one do that? Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about what that might look like, uh, heaven on earth. And I feel like a part of that is it's our goal as those who believe in heaven, who know God's love through Christ. And during this time of Lent, as we're wrestling and drawing closer to God, maybe bringing the veil thinner so that heaven is more clear to us, visible even from this place of earth that we begin to be those who show heaven on earth to the world, what it looks like. Uh, Pastor Julie talked about how she feels like a place of heaven on earth is when they do food pantry. And I couldn't agree more the number of times we see people gather together and people are helping to, to redistribute and resource others who have need and those who have need are, are receiving. And so that giving and receiving that gratitude and that love that's unconditional, this is a space or a small moment where it does kind of feel like heaven on earth or Somebody also brought up a new baby or the newness of so many different things or love that is experienced in its fullness in some way. These are beautiful things for us to imagine. And, and I think that perhaps if we get back to that Lord's Prayer, heaven on earth is when our will aligns with God's will, right? Like, like thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so heaven breaks forth into our lives or into our world or interrupts this world that seems so distant from heaven when we align our will with God's and do those things that God wills for us. And, and where do you pull and parse that apart? If God's will is being done on earth, how is that not a form of heaven? And I wonder what that means for us, for me, for you as an individual. How do we align our will in such ways that 
We can reveal heaven or show others heaven right here, right now, that we don't have to wait for that taste of what is to come. How do we do that as churches? That's a question I wrestle with all the time. How do we as a church get beyond four walls and, and denominationalism and division that we may imagine exists in our pews and instead start to live into the unity that I think is also hidden in that Isaiah text? Remember that God restored on the mountain for all people the rich foods and the gifts, not just some or a select few, but all peoples, and that the shroud that he destroys, that covers all the earth, is, is destroyed forever. And what is that thing that blocks our view from heaven that's getting in the way? God tears that up and eliminates our shame and our disgrace. Something about what heaven is is something deeper than just this thing and, and that we get to go to after we've survived this life as long as we can and have maybe believed the right things just so we can gain access to a place called heaven. It's interesting to me to consider. And so I invite you to wrestle with it. You know, what does heaven look, taste, sound, feel, smell like? And, and what are you gonna be doing in heaven. A new friend of mine that I've made at this book study and I both agree there's going to be some eating going down in heaven like a big giant buffet that all the calories and glutens and all the fat is removed and it doesn't matter. We're just enjoying amazing food with those we love and you know Isaiah even points that out with the best of meats and wines and, and these amazing things that are going on there. These are all limited things that fall short of God's glory, but they're amazing and beautiful for us. And why I shared this tonight instead of an upper room is because sitting in that space and listening to others share how they understood heaven brought me a deep sense of peace and joy, it brought tears to my eyes to see a vision of heaven on earth taking place right then and there. We had Catholics and Episcopals and Lutherans and non-denominationalists and people from multiple churches all gathered together sharing their hope, their hope for what is to come and their belief that there's something more than this and that this, this world, what we're at now, isn't so distinctly separate from heaven that we can't experience something beautiful and hopeful right now. Whatever you may think about that, I encourage you to think about it and wrestle with it yourself. And, and even if you do have doubts about what those things are, that you maybe put those doubts aside and, and embrace something, a larger faith-filled vision. And, and recognize that having doubt doesn't mean that it isn't real. Doubt in and of itself is not a problem. You know, the whether or not you believe in something or not, that's a lifelong thing. And, and we grow as we age and as we experience new things. And so if you're struggling with this idea now, that's okay. The question will be is, are you going to remain open-minded to something or just close it off and say, nope, it's not real, can't see it, can't touch it, can't taste it, so it's not real. Well, there's lots of things that we embrace in our modern era of scientific reason and experience and logic that you may think are real because science has quoted that they are or stated that they are. But the reality of it is there's lots of things under the sun that we are told are real that we have no physical or verifiable evidence for. There are things that we've said exist based solely on the fact that the math says that it should exist, not that we've ever isolated it or seen it. And so we accept things on faith all the time. It's not irrational in our age to believe in something simply out of faith. We do it all the time. The question isn't about faith. The question is, what will you put faith in? Some will put it in their own logic and reason or the logic and reason of others. And others can go beyond that into something spiritual and deeper. Wherever you are tonight with that, I encourage you to wrestle with it. And at that, I leave that with you in Christ's name. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you that you have drawn us together and encourage us to go beyond our own limited views and yet also revealed through so many a hope that goes beyond understanding. So I ask that you touch all of those who hear my voice, not with clarity and wisdom or vision, but instead a willingness to wrestle with hard things and to not give up on you, but to continually seek your face, not packaged in churches specifically or denominations or 
theological ideas or concepts or even rituals, even though these things are all valuable and helpful in understanding you. Instead, in something personal and deeply alive that stirs within each of us. In your gracious and holy name, we pray that your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. And that those of us who profess to know you live your will in such ways that people look at us and go, I see heaven. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a good night.